Hello YouTubers and welcome to another episode of the vlogs. We've made it back to Leander Club in the morning today. Still getting darker and darker as we head into Windsor, but as you can tell from the title, we're talking about steering coxless boats. Just a little request after we did, after Ed did a really good job of steering the four at Reading Small Boats last weekend now. And so we're going to ask him his tips on steering a boat and we can go through some other tips as well since we all pretty much know how to steer here at Leander Club because we don't really get in very many coxed boats until racing season or until there is a specific race that needs a cox and most of the time that is an eight. So before that we're going to get ready to get on the water. So get changed, roll out. So let's get to it. have made it outside of the club not to finish off the day but to go get yam walk yam with ed because ed's going to help us talk about how to steer a boat so we're going to walk yam post fueling up on some breaded eggs what did you have for breakfast today ed i had a sausage and egg sandwich oh. times two and oh. some porridge oh and we've got some some more high and more higher intensity rowing after we talk about steering and the pair going on later on but now we're going to find some dogs and play with them all you yeah toilet but not on my end Buzz doesn't know what to do what do I do I want to play but you're so big And we've made it into the boat bays to talk about steering these boats with the expert Ed after his experience over Reading Small Boats Head. So we have the pair here. So before we talk about tips, we're going to talk about um, how the boat is actually steered. So Ed, can you move the foot please? So down here is the feet. Move there. And that moves via metal cables. Metal cables? down the other side of the boat and it moves a pillar, moves the fin yeah. and then that makes the boat steer either way. And it's as simple as that, the boat is set or the foot with the steering on it can be in either any seat really, depends on the comfort of the person, depends on what type of course you're on, depends on the person's ability to steer wherever they're sitting. Um, some people and um, when you're doing like racing on a course, like to have the, the foot on in the stern seat. The stroke seat. <laughs> the stroke yeah, seat. Um, because the, then you can sort of line up your stern with the, uh, the boys on each side. Um, and then some people prefer the steering and bow. When you're on, say, a course like Henley or a, or a bendy stretch of river, because then you can look back behind you and see what's going on, where you have to go. And so that leads us into Ed's tips and how Ed steered such a great course for Reading Small Boats Head last weekend because it was a bendy course and there were some narrow bits. Ed, how did you do it? Um, one thing that I'd say is quite important is making sure, I, I, also before I say this, I don't claim to be an expert. <laughs> um, make sure that where you think straight is, is actually where straight is going and even um, as in make sure that you're comfortable where the foot and the wires are going straight if that makes sense so you don't want to be in a position where you're having to have your foot like like that to keep the boat straight you want to make sure that it is in the position that you know it's going to be so that when you are trying to go straight you do go straight um, and make sure that you've got enough steering one way and the other even just looking at this pair it's got it does have more steering one way than the other but that's probably a bit better for this boat because you can steer it around from bow potentially if you're just getting a bit more sort of leverage on it. Um, in terms of steering at Reading, I don't really know the course very well and I was just making sure to look around quite a lot. 
Um, but then also you have to think about just staying quite safe. Um, it's different steering a race like that because you sort of can, you know that it's going to be a fairly closed course and there shouldn't really be boats coming the other way. Um, on a river like this, the main thing that you're going to do when you're steering is just trying to stay safe. Um, it's sort of, if you try and split the river into three like thirds, as in bank, middle, and then the other bank, you want to try and stay in your bank and keep the middle as sort of no man's land because um, that's where the sort of accidents happen on like 50-50 accidents and whatever. Um, in terms of like moving the rudder, I'd say move it as little as you can get away with um, really because you don't want to upset the boat. If you can, ideally, I don't really know whether this is something I do or something I don't do. I think I do it when I'm really on it is keep moving the rudder when you're in the water and then when you're on the recovery, move the rudder back to straight so that you're not upsetting the boat in that way. But that only really works if it's a very gradual bend. If you need to just get the rudder on, then, then just do that. Um, but yeah, other than that, I would, I would say that's, that's pretty much it. That's, those are the, some secrets. And it's all kind of a simple stuff, but when you haven't steered before, when you haven't had a foot, when you've been in a lot of cox boats, like, we, like I said earlier, that we aren't in cocked boats till yeah. race season. So we get quite used to it, but then when you haven't done it, like there's differences in boats that can be quite sensitive and then you end up in the bank because you thought the tree was over there, but actually it's a few feet and then you end up like taking a branch with you home. But practice really can... Practice is a massive thing. Yeah. And like I never ever used to be very good at steering. I went to a club where it was literally just me in a single, never went in any crew boats. And if I was in a crew boat, I wasn't steering. Um, and then when I went to university, obviously, steep learning curve, have to learn to steer, have to learn to steer well, and you just have to sort of dive in and do it. Yeah. If you're afraid of doing it, then it'll chase you. Yeah. Um, At some point, you, yeah, you're going to have gonna to You're going to have to learn to steer. Yeah. Um, and when you're learning, the most important thing is just keep looking around, keep looking around and find a way to look around without disturbing the boat is a good one as well. Yeah, like sometimes you can, if you're turning around like here, you can, it's the general instinct is to put that weight on that side. So yeah. it's almost like you lean, lean the opposite way and turn that way. But everyone has their own methods of doing that, which comes with practice. And that ties into uh, like doing trials in a couple of weeks. Like if you're doing trials in a pair, one of you is going to have to steer and so if neither of the, you can steer it can really affect your ability to go down the course quickly especially when the stream goes up if you're directly in the middle of the stream you're going to have the fastest course so if you can't steer well and get off the bank and get down the middle of the water it's going to affect your speed it's going to affect your split so that's a big thing too to our benefit of steering well and that will be it for our or ed's Expert steering tips. Oh yeah! <laughs> and we've made it into the crew room post. No, pre pieces. So we've got some work to do on the water. Hopefully, you enjoyed a little bit of a chat with Ed about how he sort of worked it, racing or steering the four while racing last weekend and seeing the how the boat is actually steered as well. So a little bit of something a bit different there. Now we're going to go ahead, get on the water or push as hard as we can and then we're just a couple more tips on steering as well so let's get to it to fuel up after the session and getting to push hard on the water with Ryan and Bow once again. 
So let's fuel up and then talk about a few more tips on steering the boat. Oh, yeah. Sit. Down. And we've made it outside of the club for another day. We're trying to train Yam, but sometimes he just wants to jump in the air and chew sticks like a dog should. But finished the pieces, enjoyed myself, enjoyed fueling up, and this is another opportunity to work on the things we've been working on. So, like I've said before, we do lots of paddling, we do lots of mileage. So we want to take what we're practicing in the mileage into the harder, more intense pieces because generally when you add the intensity, when you add that extra bit of nah, it becomes more difficult to hold on to the proper technique and just that little bit of focus. So today I thought we did pretty well. And so that was another test piece for, or pieces for uh, going into trials so we're not 100% sure what the pairs combinations are yet and we'll find out so trials are two weeks tomorrow or the 2k is two weeks tomorrow so we'll find out in the pairs relatively soon before trials hopefully and then we get to really dial in what we're trying to do as a pair but coming back to the topic of today's video steering a boat as Ed mentioned a few tips there, very important to be able to know where your foot is, very important to practice and important to sort of be safe and make sure you know where you're going and where you've even been. But I think another big tip as well, which Ed, which we didn't mention, knowing the course, knowing where you are steering. So just because you've been down to the Henley stretch before, doesn't mean that you know that you can steer it. You will be able to steer it, but just there might be a couple of places that you might be better going, steering it a certain way that might make you that little bit faster. Especially, like Ed said, he didn't really, he hasn't raced down that course before, or hasn't steered that course before, sorry. So if you plan, if you get the course out, if you there's some videos of people rowing down the course, if you get those out and then watch where what, what line do I have to take where should I be in the river? Which Where's the stream? Is it on? Which bank is best or worst to be on? Where is it difficult? Which turn, like on the Reading stretch or Reading course, one of the turns, some advice we got from people that have raced it, round the marina bend, it doesn't necessarily just go round like you would expect it to when you're steering round. It sort of gets steeper as you come round. So that's something that you might look at a map and think, oh, that's an easy turn to make. But then when you're actually on it, you have to go and take that little bit of a tighter turn than you might anticipate. So, planning is a huge part, knowing the course you have to take, and then on top of that, if you're able to practice the course you have to take, that would be huge. But, that is it for today's episode, Yam Squad. Hopefully you enjoyed it a little bit different. A few of you guys did ask, how did Ed steer that course down the Reading course, or any tips from Ed steering that course as well. That is the tips from him, and one for me at the end there, but as well, a couple of people were talking about um, which boat do we row, about yesterday with um, rowing a coxless or coxed boat, and we obviously right now are rowing in coxless boats without a coxswain, the coxswain is a person who can steer the boat and sit at the stern of the boat, steer, and sort of give us instructions in, usually in an eight, and not in say a cox pair or a cox four generally the only cox boat as it's getting windy the door is shutting there rowing cox boats but generally we really only row the cox boat that is but generally the only cox boat that we row in is an eight and we don't necessarily row that too often until we sort of figure out what the race season is panning out to be and as always yam squad remember to subscribe if you haven't already hit that like button and i'll see you in the next episode